I think it's um, important, first of all, to understand the basic mechanisms, for instance, in a living system. How does a cell work? The biology on our planet has a peculiar chemistry. Many molecules, including those our body is built of, come in two versions that are mirror images of each other. Much like your left hand and your right hand, these molecules are identical in their building blocks, yet are not identical in the arrangement of those building blocks. The two mirror images of molecules are said to have different handedness or chirality. Uh, I'm a theoretician doing calculations or doing simulations and sometimes we may lose contact to uh, say the laboratory reality and the reality in the laboratory and um, it's extremely important to also visit the laboratory and go there and look at the experiment and talk to the experiment and experimentalist and see what they can do actually. The organic chemistry in our bodies works almost exclusively with one chirality. But the production of synthetic molecules in laboratories doesn't usually distinguish between two chiralities and results in mixtures of about equal amounts. The two chiralities of synthetic molecules, however, interact differently with organic molecules. Sometimes one chirality of a molecule is a helpful medication, while the other one is toxic. Therefore, they have to be separated. Ralph and his collaborators have looked at this problem through the eyes of physicists and have explored a new idea. In a fluid with a swirl, molecules will swim differently depending on whether their chirality matches the orientation of the swirling fluid or not. One type swims downstream faster than the other one. Wait far enough downstream and the first molecules that arrive will be almost pure in one chirality. This separation effect can be predicted from mathematical calculations. But Ralph and his colleagues Maria Aristov and Clemens Bechinger at Stuttgart University also performed an experimental test. We make experimental models uh, to show things which were predicted by uh, theoreticians but uh, haven't been measured on real systems like atomic systems or molecular systems. Basically it's a microscope and on the microscope you put a small fluidic chip which you can observe and in this chip you inject the particles and there we see the particles flowing in this, in this um, microfluidic channel and we have two different kinds of particles and we design the channel in a way that these two particles move with, with a different velocities through the channel and this was what we wanted to have, we wanted to separate those particles because it's it has potential technological applications which are extremely important in pharmaceutical industry, for instance. If you want to avoid uh, undesired side effects in a drug or you, you want to produce um, some chemical with specific properties, you have to separate this mixture. And so far, uh, this, um, uh, the existing methods, they all use chemical properties of molecules and uh, we tried to use uh, the shape, only the shape, and um, make the uh, separation procedure without any uh, filters, without any additional materials. We just used the specific um, uh, type of uh, flow. For this experiment, they used not chiral molecules, but two mirror versions of tiny pieces of plastic that are about a thousand times the size of a molecule so that they can be seen under an ordinary microscope. To more easily distinguish the plastic pieces with different chirality, they were colored green and blue. Then they let these chiral test particles flow with swirling water through a very thin channel edged into glass. We did the experiments on a micrometer scale. Molecules are even much smaller, so the real challenge is to make it even a factor thousand or so smaller. It is an unanswered challenge though, whether it's conceptually and technologically feasible to do a similar experiment with actual molecules. If it turns out to be possible, this technique could prove to have important applications in drug development. In an even broader perspective, you may think of whole laboratories that are on a single small chip. You all know um, electronic chips that are used in computers now, but what I am talking about is fluidic chips. So you have 
like instead of electronic wires, electric wires, you have small fluidic channels all over the whole chip, which perform some laboratory tasks, analytical and preparational steps in a biochemical laboratory. This is the long-term vision. There's the term lab on a chip, laboratory on a chip, which then can be used for blood, an blood analysis or DNA analysis or whatever you, you wish.